Hello, everybody. So today's case is mind-boggling. It's weird, um, but also very sad. It is an unsolved case, and I actually heard about this from Brooke McKenna's channel. Um, she posted it not that long ago, I believe, and when I was watching her video, I was like, I absolutely need to do more research on this. So that is going to be the case we're talking about today. Um, all the links that I used for research will be down below, like always, along to a link to my case suggestions form. But with that being said, let's get into it. So we're talking about Logan Scheindelman. And Logan Drew Scheindelman was born in Tumwater, Washington on June 27th, 1996, and he was raised by his maternal grandmother, Jenny Gibo. His dad was not in his life, and his dad was a Saudi Arabian native, so he actually left the United States before Logan was even born. His mom... Uh, is Hannah, and she never had a relationship with Logan's dad, and she actually moved to Seattle to attend art school after Logan's birth. When his mom moved, Logan and his older half-sister, Chloe, um, they became legal dependents of Jenny, and Jenny describes Logan as a bright little boy who grew up surrounded by his friends and family and is a smart and funny person. In high school, he earned good grades, and he was the defensive back on the school's football team. He loved capturing his friends and funny videos as well. And he would frequently help his great aunt Mary and her husband, uh, Mike, with chores on their small farm. And we actually have a couple quotes from his aunt Mary and uncle Mike. And Mary says, I don't know anybody that did not like Logan. And Mike says, I'd have him mowing in the fields or cleaning the barns. He was always ready and willing. So, as he grew up, he appeared to struggle with his identity. So, Logan's granddad was black, and his dad is, of course, Saudi Arabian, like we said, and his hometown of Tumwater was more than 80% white. According to his white grandma, uh, Logan's racial identity was never really an issue for him until a party toward the end of his senior year in high school when a girl would make a racist remark to him. He'd been really upset with those comments, obviously, and his friends didn't even stand up for him. And that was so upsetting for him that he actually cut off all of his friends and the entire group he hung out with. Like, he just stopped messing with them. He also made a last-minute decision to enroll at a Washington State University, which was more than 30 or 300 miles from home. Logan would make plenty of friends at... Uh, WSU, but he didn't go to classes, and he would eventually fail out of college. At the end of freshman year, he moved back uh, with his grandma and step-grandpa. Chloe and her boyfriend at the time, they were living there too. And when he came home, his grandma said he had paranoid behavior, and she attributed this to him having started smoking marijuana in college. Uh, he started to believe that he was being, uh, watched through his bedroom window and that someone was following him around. He had also become more withdrawn since he had moved back home. So it's like, really, you know, he's struggling with his identity. Um, he's in this primarily white town and this horrible girl makes this horrible comment to him. And his friends can't even be bothered to stand up for him. And that seems like that really genuinely takes a toll on him. To the point where he decides that he's going to move 300 miles to get away from it. And it just kind of seems like while he was at school, it almost kind of seemed like maybe he was unraveling a little bit. And when he came home, it just kind of got worse. So, Logan and Chloe's boyfriend didn't get along while living together. And there are rumors that some fights had become physical. But Jenny denies this. Logan began working odd jobs, and one of those was being at a laundry facility. On May 19th, 2016, Logan and Jenny were getting ready for their workday when he started to talk about a bizarre subject. He became uh, nervous and said that he had an epiphany while he was driving around. That was all he would say, and she told him that they could sit and talk about it in the evening after work. And this was the last time that they would speak. Later in the evening, when he failed to return home, his grandma decided to track his phone. It pinged near Olympia, where Hannah had lived, or Hannah was living, I'm sorry, 
and thought he was just, you know, stopping in and visiting his mom, so she called, and she was told that he hadn't stopped by her home that day. By May 20th, he still had not come home. Jenny tried to call the police to report him missing, but Thurston County Police Department was closed for the weekend, so she had to wait until Monday the 23rd to call back and file the report. Now, I am from a small town, too, where the cops are out for the weekend, and I've never had to report anyone missing, but does I, I'm not sure. I feel like you should still be able to call your any police department and kind of report them missing, or am I just dumb? I feel like that's something you should be able to do at all times and not... People that go missing, they don't wait to wait to go through in the week. Like, it's just, it's wild to me that she had to wait an entire weekend just to do this because they weren't open. So, Jenny said his phone showed that Logan was with Hannah, and police claimed he had actually been going in the opposite direction. They traced his phone activity, and it showed him going north and south on Highway 15 several times, kind of like he was going back and forth. And police don't know why he would have been following this driving pattern. They're not really sure why he was doing it. On May 20th, his black 1996 Chrysler Sebring was found abandoned along a southbound lane of I-5 in Rochester, Washington. Rochester is 20 miles south of Tumwater. So the car had all the belongings inside, all of his belongings, his cell phone, his wallet, license, and some food. On the 20th, police also got several 911 calls around 2 p.m. about a black sea bring drifting across the lanes of I-5 between Tumwater and Maytown near the milepost 92. They said the car crashed into the center median and a six-foot man with either brown or red hair jumped out of the passenger side and ran towards the thick woods on the side of the highway. Also that morning, a witness claimed to have seen Logan and two white men standing by his car that was parked on the right shoulder of the southbound lane on I-5 near exit 95. She said that she saw the car in the same location on her way back home, but this time the hood was up, and she gave a description of the men with Logan, and I'm going to read that description to you right now. One was six foot, with a thin build and straight blonde hair and a bowl cut, and wore two small a and wore a two small tank top with very short jeans. The second man was also blonde, but had shoulder length hair and was wearing a flannel shirt and jeans. And there is a drawing of one of the men. I couldn't find like two, but I am gonna have the drawing on the screen. Um, it's not the best photo. It's kind of blurry, but it was the only one I was able to find but I will have that on the screen. So a two mile search of the wooded area with cadaver dogs uh, and tracking dogs came up empty. So they searched for six hours, but they found no evidence of Logan or anyone else in the area. On the evening of May 20th, a witness called to report a naked teen in the wooded area near the highway but nothing came up, came up of this tip either. Logan's uncle Mike Ware is a retired sheriff, and he actually assisted in uh, several of the search efforts. He believes Chloe's boyfriend uh, could have something to do with his disappearance, but he had been ruled out by passing a polygraph test. Now, of course, we all know that polygraph tests aren't, you know, the most trustworthy thing. And... It's actually really easy to pass one if you really want to, even if you're guilty. So I don't necessarily think that this merely means anything, in my opinion. Great, he sat for a polygraph test. Um, but I think that his uncle Mike had like a, a decent theory with Chloe's boyfriend. Especially since there were rumors that they had had physical fights in the past. A theory is that he left on his own accord to start a new life. All his life. All his life, he only knew one side of his family, which was the white side of his family. And after he finally uh, got in contact with the black side of his family, he claimed to have had an epiphany. And it speculated that this had to do with, you know, his identity crisis. So he finally got to see and explore that side of his family. He got to know them. And he decided to have a life with people that he probably felt understood him more. 
The second theory is that he may um, have owed money for drugs and maybe potentially started to get into harder drugs and got a bad deal. If he was into harder drugs, um, they think that he could have possibly overdosed, which, I mean, I don't think marijuana is a gateway, gateway drug to harder drugs. I don't. Marijuana, I don't think, is bad. But it does seem like he's been, he was having really weird behavior, and probably any drugs on top of that wouldn't be good for your mental health. So, I guess it's it's a theory. The third theory is that he may have had a mental breakdown um, after talking with his black side of the family. And after that and all the drama with Chloe's boyfriend, it could have put a lot of pressure on his mental state. So, it's theorized that his identity crisis made him spiral and marijuana made the paranoia even worse. And all that could have made him run away and maybe even end his life which I kind of lean into that one more than the other ones um just because of his mental state and just everything else going on with him I definitely think he was spiraling I think he was having some bad mental health days definitely I don't know about maybe ending his life I think it's more likely that maybe he ran away but when I was researching this case, I got a very strong feeling that this kind of felt like the case of Bryce Laspisa. I think that's or Laspisa. I am so sorry if I pronounced his name wrong. He, it is a case of, of a guy who was also showing some weird behavior before he was supposed to head back home. He never made it home. He was just driving back and forth and then just like it disappeared off the side of the road. It was giving me the same kind of vibes as that case. And it's kind of theorized that Bryce also had, like, a mental breakdown, maybe, and just disappeared. And I'm kind of getting the same vibe with Logan's case. So the fourth theory is that foul play is involved. And Mike thinks that the boyfriend uh, has something to do with this. But police haven't ruled out the two blonde men completely, which those two blonde men, they could have been, you know, just friends of his. They could have just been strangers that were maybe, like, checking on him to see if he was okay, just hang out with him. I don't know. But I definitely think that they should have, I don't know, if they have been. I think they should be probably questioned a lot more and, you know, looked into a lot more. Because the fact that they are potentially the last people to have seen Logan is a bit odd. Um, but police also think it could have been a robbery gone wrong. Um... Or even an accidental death. So I think those last two theories are what I believe in the most. Is that it could have been foul play with the weird men that were seen with him on the side of the road. But I believe heavily in the third theory, which is the mental health thing. I definitely am like really leaning into that one. Just because of the, the whole nature of how he just kind of seemed... His mental health just kind of seemed to, de to deteriorate. And he wasn't really getting better and it doesn't really seem like maybe anybody was doing much to help him. I definitely think that's where I'm leaning. But in 2018, his case was shared on, t on a TV show called Disappeared. His family has offered a $10,000 reward and in 2020, uh, human skeletal remains were found near a dock in Longview, Washington, and police are still working to identify the body. The family are waiting to see if it's him, but they think it's unlikely due to a sketch that was issued in 2022 of the victim's possible facial features, which I was not able to find. But I do have a description of Logan in case you saw him that day or you've seen him since. So he, at the time, was 19 years old, stood about 6 foot, 150 to 190 pounds, multiracial, uh, with black hair and brown eyes. And his head was normally shaved, and he has a small scar on his left forearm. He is severely allergic to peanuts and is supposed to have an EpiPen on him, but he didn't have it on him when he vanished. He was last seen wearing a black windbreaker jacket, a white shirt and jeans, and Nike shoes. And that, everybody, is the case of Logan Scheindelman. 
So what are your thoughts? Like I said, I'm definitely leaning into the third theory that this was a mental health episode. I feel like ever since, you know, high school, he started having like an identity crisis. And I feel like that's something that like your white side of the family isn't really able to help you with. They don't get it (laughs) because they are not multiracial. So I feel like he just kind of felt like he didn't know the black side of his family. He didn't know his dad. He just kind of didn't think anybody understood him. And I think when that girl made those comments to him, it obviously it really hurt. But I think it just kind of made that spiral even harder. And maybe he thought that leaving and going far away would help. But I think either maybe something happened to him in college or there's maybe even an undiagnosed uh, mental health issue with him that could have also made this worse. And then the drugs on top of it. I just think all of this is just a recipe for disaster. And I think he was just maybe tired of his life. And he maybe he just wanted to start a new one. uh, And he could have possibly taken his life. But I, I definitely think it's the third theory where he just, he up and left. He up and left. He had a mental breakdown. That is what I'm leaning towards. Um, But honestly, all of those theories are possible. And let me know what you guys think down below. Please be respectful when leaving your comments. You never know if family or friends are going to come across this video. So just be respectful down below. But I am interested in hearing what you guys have to say. But with that being said, that is everything I have for you guys on the case of Logan Schindelman. Thank you so much for listening to his story. Um, And like I said, let me know your thoughts down below. If any of his loved ones come across this, I am so, so sorry about your loss. Um, he seemed like an amazing kid, and I hope that you guys can find him. Um, I do believe it's possible. But thank you so much for listening to Logan's story, and I will see you all very soon. Bye, guys.